I, if you got your Bibles and you want to read along with us this morning, open them up to the book of Acts. We're not going to bring you a Father's Day message, but we're going to bring you kind of a, a generic message that has to do with the position of fathers and for men in the church and for every member of the church, for that matter. And uh, Paul, in Acts chapter 20, is on the way back to Jerusalem to take that offering for the poor saints. And he tells them something or another that's very important. And in Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, and in verse 28 is our text. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Notice what he told them to do. He left them and charged them to feed the church of God. Now, that's, that's his kind of goodbye message to the church in Ephesus there, and and he's telling them their responsibility to, is to feed the church. And he is not talking about pineapple upside down cake, which is great. <laughs> when he says feed the flock, he's talking about spiritual food. And uh, I want to leave it with you for a few minutes this morning. That's, that's our responsibility and position in the world today is to feed the flock, the church. The church today is starving to death. It is getting a whole lot of religion and mumbo jumbo, but it is not getting very much of Bible teaching. Do you like Bible teaching? Yes. Well, I hope so. You know, if you if you like this uh, kind of what you call uh, promotional speakers that get up and they just whooping and hollering carry on and get everybody all primed up to do something other. That's what I ran into in the years of insurance business and stuff. You don't need that in the church. We need to teach the word of God. If God's word don't do something to you, then there's not much hope for you. I want you to turn back in the book of uh, Jeremiah for just a moment and look at a verse of scripture that tells you kind of what the, what the word of God should do to you today. Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. He describes what the Word of God is to you today. is to all of us, really. In Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did what? Eat them. Eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah says, he's writing this, he says, Thy words were found. For a while there, their words were lost because this time the nation of Israel was in captivity in Babylon and have been there for a good long time. But now the prophet has come back there and the words are out. But notice what he describes that the words are. Thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. If God's word today, my friend, does not cause you to rejoice and to want to serve the Lord, then you're none of his. That's the reason we need to feed the church. Every member of the church, local assemblies or big church, whatever it is, every member needs to be fed with the word of God. Now, for just a moment, I'm going to give you three things that you need to feed the church. It's so very important. This is not going to be an in-depth Bible study, but just a, a real quick overview of some things. Three things that you need to get in the church, the body of Christ. When you go to the assembly and you are being taught the Word of God, 
you need to cl you need to have a clear understanding of the issue of your sins forgiven. The church today does not understand that so many times. Some of them don't. They think that you've got to go down and get on your knees and ask God to forgive you of your sins. And that's all right if you want to do that. But we need to understand the issue of our sins being forgiven today. And that is, how are they forgiven? What, what do we have to do to get our sins forgiven? You, know, you can ask people a loaded question, you know, what do I have to do to be saved? And what's the answer? What do I have to do to be saved? Somebody pick me up. What? Okay. Does it require doing something to believe? No. See, the answer really is, is she's right, but the real answer is, what do I have to do to be saved? Nothing. I have to believe in that message. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, there are, in the Bible you can find verses of Scripture though that tells you things like back in Genesis when man started out that, you know, uh, Adam and Eve had two children, Cain and Abel, and uh, one of them killed the other. And he wanted to know why, Adam wanted to know why he did that. Why did you kill your brother? And he said God was wroth with him. God didn't accept his sacrifice. And what was his sacrifice? Well, Cain's sacrifice was the wheat or corn from the field. That wasn't what it's supposed to give. What was what was a person required back there to give for a sacrifice for their sin? Now, what? Blood, the sacrifice, blood of an animal. There is no law. There was no rules, no Ten Commandments, nothing like that. But what God had told them, and he told them to make them a sacrifice. And he told them how to do it and what it was supposed to be. But now if somebody asked you, can I be saved today by offering a blood sacrifice? And you can tell them, no, absolutely not. But the Bible does say that a sacrifice makes you accepted of God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. God accepted the sacrifice of Abel, rejected the sacrifice of Cain. And by accepting that sacrifice that Abel made, it says he was righteous. You can't tell somebody to do that today, and it'll work, okay? So make sure we get the issue of sin straight when we feed people today and feed the flock. Sacrifices will not save you today. In Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, after Christ dies on the cross and he ascends up to heaven, Peter is preaching that message to the church there, and he tells them something or another. And all of you are familiar with this verse of Scripture because the, the world just knows this. It's, it's automatic when you ask somebody something about how to be saved. And Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Now, then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, does that verse of Scripture say something you can do and have the remission of sins? Yes, it does. What does it say? It says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, people change that verse of Scripture around to have it read something else. But it means just exactly what it says. The baptism at that time was required for the nation of Israel. They needed to turn around from the way they were going and go back, back up. And they needed to be water baptized. In doing that, you could tell people in that period of time, repent and be baptized and you'll be saved. 
Can you do that today? No. And yet there are many people today that stand in the pulpit and tell you, you need to repent and be baptized to be saved. Does the scripture say that? Yes. Does the scripture say you can give a sacrifice and be saved? Yes. But it is not dispensational. It's not right division. God didn't say neither one of those things to you. What did he say to you as a member of the church, the body of Christ? You see, if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing today to get the forgiveness of sins or what you're supposed to be believing, how are you going to make it? In Ephesians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul tells us this. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, he says, In whom? Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me back up a second there and do verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath, past tense, made us accepted in the beloved. He's done the work. He made us accepted in the beloved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You know what grace means, don't you? It means somebody will give you something that you don't deserve. You don't merit it. What will God give you today if you believe him and you trust the shed blood of his son? He'll give you the forgiveness of sins and he'll give you salvation. You can tell somebody today that you can be saved by simply believing in that message that the Apostle Paul gives us there. And that is trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. His shed blood redeems us from all of our sins and takes care of everything for us. So those three things are necessary in feeding the church. Get the issue of sin taken care of, get the issue of how, how you do that, and get the issue of who it's to. The nation of Israel, the body of Christ are separate. Two separate things. They're not the same. People say, but you're saying God changes his way of doing. Does God change his way of doing things? Yes, he does. Does God change his character and who he is? No. Does God ever tell you anything and lie? No. God cannot lie. So what we must do is we must study the word of God. We must understand the differences between these messages that are given to one group of people over here and another group of people over here. Feed the church today, the body of Christ, the good news about your salvation. Sin is not an issue any longer. Number two, you need to understand this. You need to feed the church today the news about the law. Oh, boy. That's one of the most difficult things to get through to people. I know over the years I've taught Bible studies and classes and homes and nursing homes and places all over, and I've always had somebody that would get mad, fighting mad when you said you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments to be saved. Oh, you've got to keep the Ten Commandments. Well, do you? The Ten Commandments is part of the law, Right? given to the nation of Israel. And God said to them, if you will keep these commandments and do these things, I will bless you. But you know, Paul comes along now and he tells us something about that law because he was having the same problem that you and I are having today about trying to tell somebody, you don't have to keep the law today to be saved. Because he told us clearly that in, in uh, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 3, if you put yourself under the law, you put yourself under one part of the law. There are ten commandments, there are 613 laws, but if you put yourself under one law, you are a debtor. That means you've got to do it. You've got to do all of them. And if you disobey God and you break one of those laws, you're guilty of all of them. Now, that's totally different. 
Back there in Israel's time, when they got the law, he said, if you keep the law, I'll bless you. If you don't, I'll curse you. Paul says, you're not under the law. Don't keep the law. Don't keep part of it. The body of Christ is not under the law. Romans 6, 4, just one verse for you to remember so you can give to somebody if you want to tell them that you're not under the law. Romans chapter 6 and verse 4. Romans chapter 6, by the way, is dealing with the issue of the law. Romans chapter 6. I'm sorry. Not Romans chapter 6. <coughs> yes, Romans chapter 6, verse 14. Can't see for looking. Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not <laughs> under the law, but under what? Grace. You're not under the law, you're under grace. So the law has nothing to do with you and I today. That should be a that should be a joy to your heart when you understand that. You know, I was saved and in the church for years and I didn't understand that clearly. I really thought that I had to ask forgiveness of sins as I went along because God would hold me accountable for them. And then when someone showed me some verses of scripture and instructed me a little better, I began to understand, no, my sins are all taken care of. They're all washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. When you give the church today, the body of Christ, the good news about that, they should love you. They should love you. The problem is, not everybody's going to believe that, but that's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to provide the information. Provide the truth. If they want to believe it, they can believe it. If they don't want to, that's their choice. But you pray for them that they'll understand that it is God's word. And they need to believe it. So, the body of Christ is not under the law in any way. That's number two. Number three is speed the church the good news about the gospel. This is the most important of all of them in one sense. Many people today are preaching and teaching you what the gospel is. The gospel simply means the good news. And usually it has to do with the good news about how you get saved. But so many people are teaching that gospel that is an exodus about the law. It is on Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. It is about everything under the sun except what we just read in Acts chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, Paul talks about something or another there, and, and we read this, but many people read it and don't, don't grasp it. Verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, notice, which he hath purchased with his own blood. The body of Christ, the church today, he purchased with his own blood. So we need to get away from false gospels. If it doesn't include the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ being given for you and you receiving it by grace, then you need to stay away from it. You can find verses of scripture that teach things to the contrary to this, but not to you. The Bible is so full of a lot of information. It's a tremendous book. It deals with God dealing with people, and it deals with people dealing with people, and it deals with men dealing with people. And some of it is real good to read, and some of it is not so good, but it's the truth. And if we would study it all out and read it and get it down, we would understand these things that's important for us so that we could feed people the good news today. I've seen a many a person come to a study and stay for a while, and then all of a sudden, it's just like the light come on. And they understood it. They got it. It's a great joy to share the Word of God with somebody and see them get saved. 
I thank God that he's allowed me the short time he has to share the word of God with some folks and I hope I'll have a while longer to do that but we have an obligation as long as we're here on this earth as long as we're the church the body of Christ is to feed the members of that church we are to feed them what happens when you don't feed somebody Somebody was talking about little buddy back there a while ago and said, you're not feeding him. <laughs> it's obvious somebody's feeding him. <laughs> we took one of our two dogs to the vet this week, pardon the personal reference here, but we took one of our dogs to the vet and, and uh, she had weighed 70 or 80 pounds and I thought she was still about that. And, she was 100 pounds. He says, that dog's obese. <laughs> we had already took the other one to the vet, and the doctor said, that dog's obese. So somebody's taking really good care of these dogs. In this case, it's Virginia, and it's Rhonda. <laughs> feeding them. Feeding them. You see, when you feed them, it shows, doesn't it? It shows. It's good to take care of, of the members of the church, the body of Christ. When you give somebody some truth out of the word of God, it, it really blesses your heart. And so I hope and pray as we go forward with our moving around and our studies and so forth, it's not going to be that much different because for the last 40 years, <laughs> that's kind of what I've done until we got here. And so it's, it's not going to be anything out of the ordinary. But pray for us. And for those of you that have already opened up your homes for Bible studies, we will get with you as soon as we can get a schedule. It's going to take a while to get everything organized. But uh, I appreciate that so much. But remember these, remember these three challenges to feed a church, the body of Christ. And now you think, well, isn't that the preacher's job to feed the church? Is the only person that can feed somebody in the church, the body of Christ, a preacher? No. Everybody can. Everybody can. If you had a member of your house that lived in your house with you, would you feed them and take care of them? Or? Sure you would. We need to do the same thing with the Lord's people. We need to help them as much as we can. Sometimes we have a tendency to want to say, you know, these people are stupid. You, you, you're not going to get anywhere with them. You never can. The only thing that you do is in a case like that, and there is a case like that when you can't, you can't reach somebody. And so you do what Paul did. You just write them down as a heretic and turn them over to Satan. And that's all you can do. There's no good in spending your time over and over and over arguing with somebody that you know you're not getting anywhere with. Okay. All right. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your Son that loved us so much that he died on that cross that we might have eternal life as a free gift. And as, as a free gift, that means, Lord, that everything you've got for your Son, you're going to give us. Because you tell us in Romans that we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And joint heirs means that everything you're going to give your son that in the future you're going to give us. That's powerful. That's more than we really can understand. But we believe it, Lord. And we want to go forth with that. Knowing that one day we're going to be blessed even more than we are now. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise, for we ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and for his sake we pray. Amen.